Hello and welcome. My name is Tim Irwin. I'm with EA Technology. In today's video, we're going to discuss using the UltraTev Plus 2 for ultrasonic testing your switch gear. During this short video, we're going to discuss using the different accessories for ultrasonic testing. We're going to look at some of the different screens that you will see during your ultrasonic testing. And we're going to discuss interpreting some of the data. I hope you enjoy this video and find it useful. Thank you. To perform ultrasonic testing on your switch gear, you will need the UltraTev Plus 2 instrument. You will need to choose one of the available ultrasonic microphones, which can either be the built-in microphone, the wand microphone, the contact probe, which is used for testing sealed switchgear compartments, or the parabolic dish microphone, which is used for testing overhead assets or for troubleshooting inside switchgear. You will also need headphones that are included in the kit. Once the unit is powered up, you will want to first make sure you have the phase reference locked by observing the frequency on the top of the display and making sure it is locked in and white. If it is red, it is not having phase reference, which is picked up normally by the photo sensor and fluorescent lights. If you're unable to get frequency lock with the photo sensor, another method is to enter in your test mode Enter in the settings, select the power plug, and change the instrument to E-field sensor. The E-field sensor picks up electrical fields in the substation to get its frequency lock off of. You can then stand near a transformer or a strong electrical field, or if you're within a su substation building, you can take an extension cord and loop it around the instrument. The E-field reader will then be able to detect what the frequency is off of the power cord. Once you make note of what the frequency is, you can then go in and set your frequency manually. If the frequency reference will not remain locked through the entire test using the photo sensor, you can go in through the settings menu of the test screen to set the sensor either to E-field or manually set it to the frequency that was noted during your initial testing. Once the phase reference is locked and noted, you are going to push the ultrasonic button on the keypad to enter ultrasonic mode. You then push the left hand blue button. You touch the screen for the little power plug you touch manual and you set your frequency to the observed frequency earlier. In this case, it will be 59.96 hertz. Once set to the frequency you want, you push the metal blue button or the check mark on the screen to lock that in. When the frequency is manually set, it will be appear amber or orange on your front screen. Now your frequency is locked and you can begin testing. To begin testing, you put your headphones on, you hold the instrument in one hand, in this case the wand probe in the other hand, and you pass the probe around any door seams, gaps, bolt holes, vents, louvers, etc. Basically any place sound can come out of. And you can do this at a fairly decent pace, and you're going to be listening for a change in sound. This is an example of what surface partial discharge sounds like. This is an example of what corona discharge sounds like. Here is another example of surface discharge. And here is an example of noise. Once you find an area that you hear a, a, a sudden set change in sound from the background noise, or that sounds like PD, you're going to want to slow down 
and just take a little more time to try to identify where on that panel the sound is actually coming from. This will give you a rough approximation of where to start to look for the PD once you're able to open the door. And you'll do this for every panel, around every bolt hole, hinges, seams, gaps, any place that air can come out of you want to take and make a reading at. When you locate an area that sounds of concern, you will make note of the indication on the front display and see whether it's telling you whether you have noise or PD. If you have a, are locating PD, it will stay steady and you'll want to make note of the amplitude and the PD indication. The screen capture on the left shows PD indication. The screen capture on the right shows noise indication. When you've located your source of PD and you have your solid PD indication on the display, the next thing you want to do is look at your phase resolve plot. The phase resolve plot will show two clusters of data 180 degrees apart on the screen for partial discharge. If a single cluster of data is detected on the phase resolve plot, that's an indication of corona noise. If you're going to be testing arc resistant switch gear or switch gear that's sealed up, meaning it's got gaskets around all the doors, there are no available seams, the vents and louvers are closed, basically there's no air path for the ultrasonic sound to come out of, you will want to use the contact probe. To use the contact probe, you plug it into the instrument, just like you did the wand, making note of the red dot, and plug it in so it goes to the back of the unit and snaps in. You will put your headphones on. You will then take the contact probe, which consists of a series of magnets around a very sensitive microphone, and you attach it to the metal of the switch gear. You may want to add a little pressure lightly on the back to improve sensitivity, and you'll listen. And you'll take this and you'll move it around to a couple places on the gear and take your tests in multiple locations. The Ultra Dish is an ultrasonic accessory that's a parabolic dish that's used for detecting PD on overhead lines or within switch gear once the door is safely opened. When the door is safely opened, you can take the parabolic dish and you can scan all of the terminations, connection points, any places where cables are crossing over, looking for the largest signal coming out. At that point, you have located your PD. On the handle of the Ultra Dish is a button that activates a laser pointer. This allows you to determine where you are picking up your best signal from. If the laser pointer cannot be seen, there's a pin on the front of the Ultra Dish and a V groove cut into the base that can be used to line up to determine exactly where the Ultra Dish is pointing to. While collecting your data, there may be a section that you want to record the data that you're capturing. To do this, you can press the right button and freeze the screen, which then allows you to press the left and right blue buttons and take a screen capture. By pressing and releasing the right and left buttons, it will go into a preview mode that you'll click OK on. You then will create a file name for the saved screen capture. Once that's captured, it's saved to the SD card in the base of the unit for future retrieval. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found this helpful. To see more videos, check out the EA Technology LLC YouTube site or go to our website at www.eatechnology.com. Thank you.